In this Revit tutorial, I'm going to talk about how you can adjust things like windows and doors uh, with dimensions. So I just have a basic, you know, simple rectangular building here with um, you know, a few windows and a double door here. Um, and they're just kind of put in arbitrarily. There's really no thought or reason to any of the spacing. If you actually want to, um, you know, have these equally spaced or at, you know, set distances apart, uh, there's a couple ways to go about that. First, you know, we can certainly click on, let's say, a window here and adjust it with its temporary dimensions. So I could say, well, instead of this being five feet in between, I'd like that to be six feet in between, and it will move the one that I have highlighted. Uh, that works perfectly fine. What can be frustrating, however, is um, Sometimes in clicking on objects, the temporary dimensions don't always show up quite where you want them to or in the way that you would like. Um, you can uh, manipulate temporary dimensions a little bit. Uh, on things like windows and doors, they by default are going to the center line. If you click on the witness line grip right here, this little blue circle, we can move that to go from end to end to center on the object, and that will, you know, obviously greatly change how these dimensions look. So I could put this one from this edge and this witness line here, and now I know that there's two feet three inches between my windows, for example, and if I want that to be maybe three feet, um, now I would know that. So that's perfectly acceptable to do, um, but that's, you know, not always exactly what you want. What we can do, um, are, well, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, we can either force these uh, temporary dimensions to stay, or we can actually draw in new permanent dimensions. If I click on this little symbol right here on a temporary dimension, that turns the temporary dimension into something permanent, so when I click away from it, it has stayed. Um, and in this case, if I only wanted these two dimensions, that could be great. Uh, I could come in and then click here and say, well, from center point to center point, perhaps, whoops, um, I, I want that to be, oh, let's say, um, five feet or something like that. I mean, that would be perfectly fine. Uh, but what I would actually like to do is just delete those and put in my own so that I can do an entire long wall instead of just those couple of dimensions. To get to a, a permanent dimension line, what we're going to do is go up to the Annotate tab on the ribbon, and then we're going to pick Aligned, the first one here in Aligned Dimension. And um, as I put these in, I think what I'll do just for the purposes of demonstration is click the center line of my exterior wall here. And then I'll come down and I'll just pick the centers of each window. This may or may not be how you would actually do it, but it'll work for, for this example. Okay, I'll come out. And now I have a whole series of permanent dimensions. Now you see when you put these in, um, there's a few different things going on here. First, we can actually lock these dimensions. And what that'll do is force a relationship from one point to the next where no matter what changes I made, for example, if I locked this one, this distance would always need to be 8 feet, or this distance would always need to be 7, and so on. Uh, but that's not really what I want to do right now. The other thing that shows up that I'm interested in is um, perhaps right here. Now, if I wanted to go into these dimensions and click each one individually, I could do that. But if I wanted them to all be equally spaced, and in larger commercial projects um, where you're putting in a big row of offices or windows and things like that, that's very likely. What you can do is click this little equalize, this EQ right here. So right now it has this faint red line going through it, which means that they are not equal, and we can see that. Now if I actually just zoom out a little bit and click on that, it forces all of these dimensions to be equal. And this is including my exterior walls because I included them in this measurement. If I just grab my Modify tool and click off of that, you'll see now that all of these spaces are perfectly equal. But it also shows you the EQ symbol. Now, maybe at this point that's fine and you just want to click on this and delete it and move on. Um, but if you actually wanted to see those numbers, 
what we need to do is activate those new permanent dimensions, come over to our properties palette, and if you look right here where it says equality display and then equality text, if you click on that, we can actually have it be the formula that it used or we can actually have the value. So if I say value and apply, and now look at it, it's actually giving me the number between each uh, each window in the wall. So that can be um, very, very handy. And if you decide that was good enough, you, didn't, you don't want that anymore, you can just click on it and hit delete. It'll give you an ignorable, well not I guess ignorable, but a warning just saying, you know, um, that there was a constraint here, you know, Revit likes to warn you, so that's fine. I'm not too worried about that right now. Okay, so we were able to equalize these windows. Um, and if I look down here, um, something else I'd like to point out is, let's say I click on this window. Um, not only can I move it, let's say, left and right, but if I look up at my properties palette, I can also move it up or down. So all these windows went in with a sill height of three feet. Well, if I wanted to, I could change that sill height um, to be higher or lower. But since I'm in a plan view, that um, I, it wouldn't really let me let me see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is come down in my properties or project browser rather, and I'm going to switch to an elevation view. So this would be my south elevation. So I'll switch to that view, and so here we can see our building uh, from the side. So it's pretty tall. Got some low windows here. Now if I click on one of these windows and I look up at the properties and see, yep, that is in fact this casement double with trim. And here's the sill height. So I could come in and change that to, how about two feet? And now that window has moved down to a sill height of two feet. I can also see that number here in my temporary dimensions. That would be another way to change it. So that just moved that one window because that's the only one that I had selected. However, if I held down the control key and picked both of them and then changed it, they would both move. So this would have worked um, from the floor plan level one view, but I wouldn't have been able to see it. Um, but those are some quick adjustments and ways that you can get um, the objects in your space lined up how you want them.